to Fish Hut Northwest. We're here in the kitchen with Chef Kelly for our recipe of the week, which I believe is some venison meatballs. Okay. Swedish meatballs. Swedish meatballs. Yes. So is there a difference? Yes, there's absolutely a difference. They are seasoned with some uh, odd uh, seasonings that uh, I think most people wouldn't grab. Okay. And uh, that's actually uh, nutmeg and allspice. I mean, you think of that as like pumpkin pie stuff, you know. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So we're starting with our, our venison grind. This is a great new way to use up your ground venison. This, of course, is an 80-20 grind. And uh, there we go. All right, so we're going to start with our bread. White bread. White bread. White bread. I don't like the crust, so I cut that off. Wasteful. Whatever. Feed it to your birds. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we're not going to use it today. All okay. right. So then we're just going to chop this up just a little bit. Doesn't that be pretty? Then we're just chopping it up. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to say this is a quarter cup of milk, but really you just need some milk because basically what we're doing okay. is we're going to just get this absorbed all in there. And then we're just going to squeeze this out. Oh. So I don't need all this extra, oh, extra liquid. Just the right amount. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you get the basic concept. Yeah. Not yet. Because oh. I want to use that same bowl. For, right? So we want to use that same bowl for our egg. We're going to whip this up. Egg. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Another thing I also do if I'm going to do like something like this, I add my seasonings to here. So we're going to add about a teaspoon of salt, okay. a teaspoon of our Nutmeg. Now what kind of flavor does that actually give to the dish? It gives the kind of, you know, the sweet spices kind of, uh, you know, that's why, you know, you know, people go to Ikea and they go, wow, what is that, what does that taste? I can't put my finger on it. It's just because they just don't associate it with, with a savory uh, dish. So same thing with the allspice, about a teaspoon. Swedish. 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 Ikea. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's incredible how many they sell there too, by the way. Yeah. And you can easily make these at home. Uh, about a teaspoon of pepper. And so I sauteed some uh, some onions earlier. This is a half an onion. Uh, I just went ahead and go ahead and saute those up. Okay. Is that yeah, prime the pan also? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we get that all mixed up in here. So then we'll get some kind of a big clump of spices going. Mm -hmm. Right, because who wants to have a whole mouthful of nutmeg, right? Yeah. Okay, so I've already washed my hands already. Okay, this, now you can get rid of that. Now I can do Okay. All right, so we're just gonna get in there. So I see some that you've already prepared so we can get a look at them. Right, so yeah, that's uh, what, golf ball size? Yeah. Yeah, so make sure you just mix this up really good. Uh, you know, sometimes when people think about meatballs, they think, well, you know, I want to make the best meatball I can, and so uh, I'm going to use 100% meat. That's not a good meatball. No. If you do 100% meat, you're going to go, well, you know, you're just, you know, you know trying to extend them out or, or trying, you know, trying to do something else with the meatball. I want to make a better meatball by no, no uh, filler in there. No, I mean just the bread. Like oh, people the bread. want, yeah, they want to leave the I'm bread sorry. out. And I know you're keto friendly, and, but if you do do that, then you're going to, your meatballs are going to suffer. They're going to be a little more tough. So, oh, okay. okay. I never knew what the bread was for. Right, and that's what it is. Okay. Okay, so about, about that size right there. Okay, so of course we made a, a couple of those already. All right. Well, the crew will get to enjoy these today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to start our sauce. So we're going to start with a quarter cup of butter, half a stick of butter. All right. Okay. You see we got our pan already hot. Ready to go. Rock and roll. I'll take that. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Well, nice and hot. Nice and go. hot. Okay, we're going to add our flour. About a quarter of a cup, or is that? That's a quarter cup. Don't you see the cute little? Nice little nut brown color to it. Okay. Okay. And we're going to add our beef stock to it. You're going to add about half. This is uh, going to be three cups of beef stock. And I'm not adding all of it yet because I want to make sure I don't have any lumps. So I have my little whisk. Make sure I get all my lumps out. Now you can go dump and go. Okay. Okay. I'm going to reserve. Go. Just a little bit of that, so that's probably two and a half, and about a cup of cream. So that's the heavy he cream. Heavy cream, right? Very popular mm -hmm. with the keto. Right. So this is going to be, uh, let's do about a teaspoon of black pepper. We're going to have to season this, and, and we're going to probably come back and re-season it. Uh, because commercial beef stock has a lot of salt in it, so you really okay. don't want to have to... Um, Make it, uh, have it reduced down and be too salty. Okay. And I know a lot of guys on our crew and stuff, they, they make their own. Yes, and, and I highly recommend yeah. that you make your own beef stock. It's, uh, you know what's going in it. Uh, you're going to have a lot more flavor. Another thing is that uh, beef stock, we didn't have any gelatin to it. And so when you make your own, gel and make your own beef stock, it's going to have a little more uh, mouthfeel to it. It has a little viscosity to it. Uh, it's because the gelatin's coming out of those bones. Oh. Yeah, and so I also add just another little teaspoon of our spices, our allspice. Ooh, too much. <laughs> Go. This stuff's powerful. Okay, another teaspoon of uh, nutmeg. And if you wanted to use fresh nutmeg, absolutely, that way better flavor too. Wow. Yes. Uh, you can find whole nutmeg at you know at most of your nice grocery stores, okay. uh, and just use your microplane. All right, well, this is going to need to come to a simmer to, to get thickened up here. Okay. About 20 minutes? Yes, you know. And well, then it sounds like a great time to throw it back to the guys in the studio for this week's regional weather report. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. And I believe we are just about ready to throw these Swedish meatballs into the pan. Yes, balls are ready. Uh, okay, he went there. <laughs> Let's go. All right guys, <laughs> so we have to sear our meatballs. All right. I've got a pan hot, ready to go. Hot and ready to go. Uh, medium heat. Okay. okay. So we're looking to just get some color on these guys. Yeah. We're not looking to fully cook these things, so don't have to go crazy. Kind of toe the line of, of uh, too much color and blah blah blah. All right, so you're just basically browning them and yeah, just searing them. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. Not going to crowd the pan too much because okay. you know, crowding the pan is not a good thing because what happens is that uh, you're going to start steaming stuff and that's not what we're trying to go for. So. Okay. Be prepared to do a couple multiple batches. All right. And you had the sauce simmering for at least 20 minutes. Yeah, at least yeah. 20 minutes. You know, we're just trying to... Just a low simmer. Yeah, it's a low yeah. simmer. Covered. All right. A little bit. Okay. So you see, we're, yeah. we're starting to get some good color. So you just turn them often to get every side. Right. Yeah. Now, if you want to skip this process, you can throw them in the deep fryer. You can... Uh, just throw them on a sheet pan and put them in the oven. You know, we're just trying to get some color. You know, probably 400 degrees is, is what we're looking for for our, our if you're going to throw them in the oven. That's probably the easiest. So around 400, yeah. Yeah. Less mess. Less mess. And so basically what we're doing here is, uh, number one, we're trying to keep our shape. Um, and you'll see that they're kind of getting, you know, one-sided or whatever. Wobbly. Uh, yeah, they're not going to be completely round. If you were going to do them in the oven, they would probably stay a little more uh, round. Consistent. Ball size. Yeah. Shape, you know? Okay. 
So we're getting some great color here. All right. Okay. And you have some of them already made up earlier, right? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah, so we're going to transfer these guys. Alright. These guys into our sauce here. Okay. There we're getting good color. Yep. Good. Smells delicious. Right, I can as I usual, smell. chef, yeah, you nutmeg, just blow me away. Nutmeg and allspice in there. Yeah. Okay. okay make sure we get good here on all sides here. Yeah. Okay. Look at that. You know, it seems like maybe a little bit of a time-consuming process, but actually it's not that bad. Not that bad. Not that bad. It really isn't. Yeah. Okay. So if you could plate me up a bowl of mash, because we're ready to go, because I already made some earlier today. Well, sure. I'll try to do a little bit better job than I did with the, uh, what did I have, rice? rice. That you, oh, yeah, you remember, right? <laughs> yeah. That's going to be on the blooper reels. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll have a couple blooper rolls, I'm sure, and you guys will enjoy it. Okay. So you remember I said that uh, hold off on your salt because uh, you know after it reduces down, your salt level could be now too much. Okay. Oh, we're perfect. Yeah, I think I tend to oversalt things. Right, and it's yeah. always easier to. Uh, season, add more. Season, yeah, add more than try to try to fix all that. So we're good on the spices and. Oh, we're good on the spices. I taste everything. Lots of pepper. I know you reserved some of the beef stock and all that just in case. Just in case. We're good. Yep. All we're right. Good with that we don't need that. Mm. Wow. Mm. Everybody. You know, mm. Oh well, this, you, know, you made too much sauce. Oh, well, you could never have too much of the sauce. <laughs> Tell you what. Can you freeze that sauce, Chef? You could. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So a traditional thing to serve with it is lingonberry, but lingonberry is kind of hard to find. Another substitution is uh, some red currant jam. Very, very, very traditional. Okay. And good. Yeah. There you go. Look at There's that plate. Meatballs, guys. A little, a little bit of parsley, parsley for color. Wow. We're good to go. Well, you get to enjoy that. Yeah. <laughs> Not keto friendly, but all right. it's still well, snows and really that's delicious. That's all right. Well, we'll, <laughs> we'll throw it back to the guys in the studio to close out the show today.